Game developers are very important for the gaming industry. That's why it saddens me when a developer or a publisher has a fall from grace. And in today's video, we're covering what companies have had a fall from grace in the last decade or so. Starting off, we have EA, which as of late has been sort of a punching bag for gamers and developers alike. Which, can I blame them? EA has shown us time and time again that they have insatiable greed. For example, they have made hundreds of Sims 4 DLCs. Oh my goodness! What? What the fuck? You know how old that game is? Almost a decade old, and they were still pumping out DLCs left and right. You can't even play the base game without most of those DLCs. That's just ridiculous. You, I should not have to pay a bunch of money for several DLCs just to play the game I already probably spent, I don't know, 20 to 40 bucks on. Oh, and how can you forget the state Apex is in? It is a disaster. Same with every other game they have. Battlefield, FIFA, Madden, and several other games. You also can't forget all the companies and their IPs that they have abandoned. Like Visceral Games. The last game they made was Battlefield Hardline, and most people hated that game. I kind of liked it, but that's because it was a unique take on the Battlefield series. I don't think it's the best Battlefield game, but it honestly wasn't that good of a game. And yeah, in my opinion, Visceral deserved better than that, after making EA money with Dead Space. And I know the Dead Space remake came out recently, but it was made by a totally different studio. It wasn't even made by Visceral. And then you have EA's biggest company right now, which is Respawn. And, and I know I mentioned Apex, but hello? What about Titanfall? Where is the third one? Because last time I checked, people like movement shooters now. And right now, I think Titanfall would be immensely successful. Because you could get Apex players to transfer over to Titanfall, which would give them a massive, like, advantage over many other games in my opinion and i know respawn also makes the jedi games but now ea slash respawn isn't partnered with star wars anymore they lost their disney contract like last year so that idea is kaput maybe if respawn leaves being partnered with ea they can make another jedi game but i don't see that happening oh and don't think i forgot what ea has done with dice they have just completely ran that company in the ground and they don't seem to care because like I said earlier, EA has a lot of insatiable greed and doesn't care if they ruin many people's favorite games or ruin a company. And I could list more things that shows EA's insatiable greed and their fall from grace, but we have more companies to cover. The next developer I would say has had a fall from grace in recent time is Ubisoft. And I know they have Rainbow Six Siege and the Assassin's Creed games, but for the most part, Ubisoft always underdelivers and are too ambitious with their games, in my opinion. And what I mean by they underdeliver is that they promise you one thing in the trailer, and then in the game, it's the complete opposite of what you expected. Like every time. It just sucks. Which isn't that bad compared to other companies, but that's just really frustrating. And that's pretty much all I have to say about them. Now, a company that might be starting their fall from grace is Techland. And the reason why I think Techland is probably going to eventually start becoming hated is that they partnered with Tencent. And if any of you have been on the internet as of late, like in the last couple of years or whatever, have paid attention to what's happened with Tencent, you would know it's not something good. So... I would tell you what it is, but we'll be here for a very long time. So if you do want to know what it is, I would suggest looking it up. But I will tell you this. It te technically has to do with something with the Chinese government. It's pretty much what it boils down to. Next company on our chopping block is Square Enix. Now Square Enix was a company that used to be highly respected and is now one of the most hated companies in the gaming industry. That's sad to me because I genuinely used to like them. I used to like every game they made. But the reason I think this is that people wait so long for them to release a game 
and then it just ends up being underwhelming. Like with some of the Final Fantasy remake stuff. It's like, I don't even think those are really remakes. Oh, you also can't turn a blind eye to them basically going bankrupt because of NFTs. Trying to make, I don't know, NFT games or basically like what everyone did with memes. That's what they tried to do with some of their stuff, which is very disappointing for a company that used to make such good games like the Kingdom Hearts series and Final Fantasy. Now, the next one we're going to cover is probably a company that you guys have all heard of. Take-Two Interactive, who, in my opinion, they're just terrible. They've just made a bunch of bad business practices that, in my opinion, are pretty slimy. And a thing that Take-Two is currently trying to do is they are suing Remedy Entertainment because they think that Remedy's logo looks really similar to Rockstar's. And I just think that's stupid. That That's dumb. You're suing someone over a logo? Not only that, Remedy is one of the most respected developers right now. I think a reason Take-Two is doing this, though, is because they used to be partnered with Remedy Entertainment. Or they weren't really partnered, I should say. Remedy Entertainment just gave them Max Payne. So by the time the third Max Payne game came around, Remedy was done with Max Payne, but they gave it over to Rockstar. Currently, right now, Remedy Entertainment is with Epic Games. And I don't think Rockstar likes that, or I don't think Take-Two likes that one bit. Oh, one company I forgot to mention that, honestly, used to be very respected was Deep Silver. And the person who they're currently partnered with, which is Volition. Both of these companies made good games back in the day. Deep Silver helped make the first Dead Island game, which I know when that game first came out, a lot of people were like, this game's riddled with bugs and it's just terrible. So maybe Deep Silver hasn't been good, like ever. It's just that the publisher, it's just that the, the developers they worked with were good. Which I'm pretty sure Techland helped make Dead Island. Yeah, they did. So then Techland went like, okay, we're gonna go make Dying Light since you guys won't live, give us any creative freedom. And now, that's why Volition's games are just terrible. That's why the new Saints Row was just dog shit. It's not good. People might defend it, but it's like, um, I watched a lot of the stuff about it. It was not good. There were so many bugs. And most of the characters in the game, most of the NPCs you fight, or not NPCs, the enemies, let's just say they're really tanky and it's not fun to play them. What honestly Deep Silver and Volition are doing to Saints Row now it's just despicable. That game used to be way more respected than it is. Okay, the next company we're going to talk about is someone that I think is doing the reverse of what all these other companies I said were doing. And I know I said this video was only about companies that were once respected and had a fall from, from grace, but I'm going to do the opposite right now. 343 Industries lately has started to gain the Halo fan base's respect with what they have been doing with Halo Infinite recently. It still isn't honestly the best game, but I think 343 is getting pretty close with it. And I am all for them finally fixing the game. And I think one of the big reasons for 343's big comeback is that they got rid of a lot of the old leadership and most of the former Bungie people. And I can't believe I'm about to say this, but some of those Bungie employees were part of the problem. This wasn't the good old days of the first three Halos. Halo Infinite was chalked up in its marketing as being the most ambitious Halo game ever, and it fell flat. And I think that is because the old, older employees got complacent and thought people would buy it because, oh, it has some of the same creators of the first Halo games, which is exactly what happened to Turtle Rock. Back for Blood game. It's the same thing. They tried to market it as having some of the same people, but it didn't even have the same people in it. But yeah, I am all for 343 finally fixing Halo Infinite. We're still not there, but we're getting close. And this next company, you already knew it was going to be inevitable. Now that 343 is finally having their big break, um, Bungie seems to be doing the opposite of 343 now. Now Bungie's having a fall from grace. And I just think that's really sad. Bungie made most people's childhood, at least people that played Xbox, 
they made one of my favorite franchises, Halo. But now they make really expensive DLCs for Destiny and just completely ignore people's concerns. Hey, yo, what the fuck? Your fans that have been giving you all their money, like, that have been so loyal to you for, like, the past, I don't know, 20 years, and you're just gonna just ignore what they want. And I know now they're starting to listen to people, but too little too late. Now, the one company none of you will be surprised is on here is Blizzard and Activision. They're the epitome of a fall from grace. Activision technically started, they made almost all the first big games. Activision and Nintendo and Blizzard was like the biggest like company rivalries in all of like the gaming industry back on in the day. Like in the 80s, 90s, because they made everything. Activision did almost all the Atari games and all that stuff. These two are just downright terrible. Number one, Activision and Blizzard are just insanely greedy and they would rather make a $20 skin than fix any issue with their games. Hey, bro, come on now, dawg. Come on, man. Not only do they do this, they pander to everyone about everything under the sun. I don't know every company does this, but they're massive hypocrites and do everything they tell others not to do. The Activision CEO is also part of the problem. He doesn't seem to care that everything he does desecrates those who came before him. Like, there's just been a lot of weird stuff that's also happened lately with them. There was a weird milk thing that happened. But the thing that bothers me the most about all these companies is that most of these CEOs used to be developers or creative directors. And they seem to have forgotten where they came from, which is just disappointing. There's more to talk about with Activision and Blizzard, but there's smarter people that have made bit better videos about Activision and Blizzard. Like the Act Man. I would recommend you watch his video or someone else's video about Activision and Blizzard. Well guys, that pretty much wraps up today's video. Hope you guys have enjoyed it and just let me know if you want more of these commentary videos. And that's pretty much it. See you guys in the next one. Peace out.